Okay, so I have got the live stream monitor up and running, so I can see any comments coming in on the live stream while we're flying. So let's go and get this aeroplane set up. So we're going to put some fuel in it first, because we're going a long way. Uh, we don't want a passenger in the aeroplane with us, we're just going to do this on our own. Um, I'll sort out the volume levels for the engine when we are a bit further into this. So, rich mixture, uh, throttle on, battery on, alternator on, and put the anti collision lights on. So, um, So we're using the left fuel tank uh, at the moment. Okay. So we're looking for a thousand RPM. Just checking the temperatures and the pressures, waiting for them to come up. And uh, while we're waiting for that, we can now go and turn on the GPS. Tosh, system test OK. You can see the river stretching out in front of us. So if we go and have a look on the map, you can see where we're going to go today. So we're going to follow the Snake River. So we'll depart the airfield and then basically fly straight across the path of it and then follow it up through the hills and it continues on and on and on. It goes narrower in some places. It continues on along the border of Idaho and Oregon and then later on Washington there we go so it's, it's interesting isn't it so it should be quite picturesque along the way I'm hoping it will be never been in this part of the world before in the simulator so let's calibrate the altimeter and calibrate the um, the gyro compass okay so do we need we need enough lights on we don't need any lights inside so there's pressures and temperatures are all looking good Okay, but this is all going to be visual today anyway, so I don't know why I'm worrying so much about the aeroplane. Uh, so let's get the head tracking on. the weather on live weather but I don't think there's much wind about at all it's a very very still day by the look of it I'll just make sure that we are on live weather uh, yep we're on live weather lifetime at the windsock over there. It's almost hanging straight down.
okay so we need to turn around to face north so we'll turn this way we can see the water over there that's the river that we're going to be following it's over to this side of us So we have a few miles before we get into the hills. Just have some gentle landscape. Should we have a look at the map, see where we're going. So we're just leaving Ontario behind, which is just behind us. Obviously this is not the Ontario in Canada, this is a, a town in Oregon. And this is Payette coming up. Strings and Wings has appeared in the live stream chat and says they have just found the channel and they would love to fly together sometime. Yeah, of course. Um, unfortunately, in uh, about 24 hours time, I will be leaving for a few days, so um, there will be no videos from the channel for a while. closer to the hills, slowly but surely.
Viper Gaming says, good evening, how's it going? It's going okay. Hopefully this will, get a bit more, this will become a bit more interesting in a few minutes once we get into the hills. So this is the Snake River we are following. I'm guessing so names because it snakes around all over the place. <laughs> but it will take us into the hills in a few minutes time. You can, that's interesting that you can see the combine harvester down there chopping the crop. did I set off from? Kilo Oscar, November Oscar, Ontario Municipal in Oregon, on the near the edge of the Snake River. There's another airfield coming up. I nearly started from this airfield. Let's have a look at the map, see how we're doing. So we're going to head off round the side of these hills. So the scenery will become a lot more interesting very soon. Well, that's the hope anyway. Yeah, it's interesting looking at the map, this Snake River. I don't know this part of the world at all, but yeah, it just follows... Or well, when they drew the state boundaries, they obviously took them up to the river, didn't they? Hopefully we'll get there before the sun goes down, otherwise we might find ourselves manipulating time a little bit. Or we might have to land somewhere if it gets too dark, but we'll see. We should get a lovely sunset during the flight. So we are down here or a dam? Oh, is, or is it just a bridge? I think it's just a bridge. Five hundred. Terrain ahead. Pull up. 
Terrain ahead. Terrain ahead. Okay, so I'll um, get a bit of altitude here to stop it complaining at us. I can stop this from doing the terrain warnings, can't I? If I remember how. Terrain ahead. Terrain ahead. So, wrong way is asking, how do you find the Carinado PA-28s compared to the Just Flight ones? I think, well, I used to think that the Just Flight ones weren't tremendously accurate flight models until several people wrote to me and said they'd got hundreds and hundreds of hours in the real thing. And one guy in particular had actually worked on the PA-28 family for Just Flight. He was one of the consultants that worked on it, and he said it matches the numbers perfectly. Um, so yeah, the, the PA-28s are a bit of a... Um, they're not aerobatic planes, that's the thing you have to remember. And the Carinado versions are kind of dumbed down the flight model. In, in a way, they're a bit too responsive. They're kind of simplified to let you get out of trouble easily. So they, they kind of fly as you think an aeroplane should versus what an aeroplane really flies like, which might not always be the way you imagine. Or well, that's what I took from what the various people have told me. The quality of the texturing around here is really good, isn't it? This is what I was hoping for, that when we get into the hills, that it would be really nice textures and, and mapping, and it looks really good. Hopefully we'll get some airfields along the way to do some touch and goes as well. So we're just coming into the, the valley now, which is what I was looking for the whole time. So we're going to follow the river. Um, am I meant to be joining anybody? It's just a solo flight. I'm just flying along. Anybody can join in if they want. I'm on um, Southeast Asia. I am live. So if you want to come and fly along with me, you're welcome to do so. If I go and run Volanta in the background, I guess it will track the flight as well, won't it? And you'll be able to see me on the map in Volanta. It's really useful how it does that and takes ages and then you can't see where you're going.
So, on here, I was going from Kono to 00W. So if I go into here and say Kono to 00W, I think it's that one. There's no autopilot in the Piper Archer 2. So, if you just connected, we're flying along the Snake River, which is on the border between Oregon and Idaho, and then later on it becomes Washington and Idaho. So this is another one of my um, magical mystery tours, just flying along valleys and seeing what places we find along the way. This looks pretty good, doesn't it? Obviously the weather has played into our hands, we've got a lovely afternoon. So let's have a look at the map. So we're just coming up the Snake River. We'll be up towards Brownlee in a few minutes. We're just west of Lee Williams Memorial, which is zero uniform niner. Really good quality textures, isn't it? It's very, very good.
Let me see if Valanta is doing its thing. I presume if we go and click follow flights, it will put us on the aeroplane. There we are. So we can see ourselves in 3D now. What server am I on? I'm using the Southeast Asia server, usually because it's just a bit quieter. So you're not fighting with so many people. Why don't I fly on VATSIM with these chill flights? Um, I think it would be boring for people more than anything. And plus, you never know with VATSIM whether you're going to have controllers come in and suddenly I'll have to stop talking to, you know, stop answering questions and have to start talking to ATC. Something I have thought about doing is, um, just because it's more relaxed and you can get away with it, is to talk to the guys at my air about maybe recording a couple of sessions with them just to show people what it's about they're kind of they do like a more conversational form of ATC where it's not too strict so you can ask questions while you're talking and the whole group can hear you obviously the whole group is talking to ATC as well but they have like a nominated person or pe people sometimes who act as ATC. But they work very differently than VATSIM though. They'll organise a group flight and then obviously people a lot, everyone flying the route has full access to ATC during the flight. I guess the um, the new AI ATC robots are going to change the game there, aren't they? So we're going to carry on all the way up here. <laughs> to 
this would probably make quite a good group flight actually because it's quite wide so you could get a few of you abreast flying along the river together I think there are a few airfields along the way. Yeah, there's one Oxbow. Should we do a touch and go at Oxbow just to break the journey up? So about coming towards about a quarter of the way through the journey. I would be careful because this aircraft this aircraft has no autopilot obviously, so you have to watch what you're doing. I'm just getting a little look at this. So we follow round, carry on along. So we're about 15, 20 miles out from Oxbow yet. So at this fork we're just coming up to, we're going to go right. Our shadow down there on the hillside. Five hundred. Five hundred. Look at the turbulence kicking us around as we're approaching these hills. the airplane on a bit faster. I'm going to switch over to the right tank for a bit. Getting a, bit, getting a bit darker, I guess we ought to go and... Well, we don't really need pizza heat on, it's warm enough today, it's about 15 degrees, isn't it? So, put the landing lights on though, because it's, it's getting that kind of dusky time of day. Make sure we are seen by others. temperatures going with this being pushed up to the limit on the throttle. Yeah, it's a Carinado aeroplane, isn't it? They can do this. They can do this all day. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. So this is Brownlee, we're just coming past. We're about 16 miles out from Oxbow now. The 
plane's pretty well trimmed out. I'm not holding the controls. It's starting to roll gently right there. You can see that happening, so just correct for that with a bit of trim. There we go. It's probably rolling gently left now, isn't it? <laughs> <coughs> yeah, it's still rolling left. Only a tiny, tiny amount, but chasing perfection. Just wondering, how did I get the GTN 750? The uh, lovely developers that work on the TDS... Um, it's not called the 750, is it? It's the, is it GTN XI or something? It's, the name is in the tablet, isn't it? They um, gave me a copy of it to feature on the channel. Oh, it is GTN 750. It's the XI though, isn't it? So it's one of the few times that anybody has given me software in return for showing it to an audience to encourage them to go look at it. It is very, very good. I hardly touch half of the features it's got. So I think what it's doing here is illustrating your glide distance. Obviously if we climb, if I zoom out, if we climb for a little bit, you'll see this that area get bigger around the aeroplane. It's basically the places we could glide to. So you can see as we were climbing, the area is now longer in front of us. Obviously we couldn't glide far in that direction. <laughs> or that direction. But it's all integrated with Navigraph now, which is really nice. How do I use VR? I don't. I haven't bothered with a VR headset because I, my my, um, my dad has got one and I had a little play on his when I've been down visiting. Um, but I don't bother because I put videos out on YouTube. So I actually, my monitor on my desk is only a 1080p monitor on purpose. I've got a 4K monitor, but I don't use it. Not for flight sim anyway. Because otherwise that would mean wasting some of the horsepower of the graphics card just to downscale the screen from 4K down to 1080p to go out to YouTube. So I actually watch it at the native resolution that's being pumped out on the live stream, which is why, I guess, why the live stream is so smooth. Because there's lots of headroom there for the, both the GPU and the, the internet connection. Right, we should find Oxbow somewhere along here. Yeah, it's just in this little offshoot in here, so let's go and start descending. So which way is the wind? So we need to double back on ourselves, ideally, then. Or we come in over the ridge line further along and in. I think we can see the... Yeah, there's the airstrip. straightening the head tracking up. Yeah. 
So the question comes for us, how are we going to turn around to come back? And does it warrant it with the wind speeds? There's only three knots of wind, we could come straight in, couldn't we? So I'm going to circle here. To lose a little bit of height, because we're too high. So we're losing speed quickly, which is good. We're actually gaining altitude, which is not good. slip as well and turning it into the turn. not supposed to land here, look. We're just going to do a, a bounce and go. Now we have to fly the valley, because we haven't got a powerful enough engine to climb out. <laughs> but we're going the right way, broadly, to get back to the river, so it's not a huge problem. Snake River is still below us. Well, it wasn't really a touch and go, was it? It was more of a bounce. And it should actually be marked on Valenta. Um, if I can find the right program. Yeah, there we go. So our touch and go is 174 feet per minute. 101 knots. What I might do, because I'm getting really tired, I hadn't anticipated how tired I was going to be, although it is quite late, it's gone 1am here, I may look to land uh, Melamoose maybe, or one of these other small airfields. It's a tiny one, that would be good fun wouldn't it, trying to land down there. There's one down here, Sluice Creek. Big Bar is another one. That's quite a big one, actually. Five hundred. Let's look where we're going, really. Five hundred.
the snow. I hadn't anticipated seeing any snow. going in a, a few moments. Start putting some altitude in. Let's just check the elevation of Malamus then. So 6,700 feet, isn't it? So we're currently at three and a half, so we need to start climbing. So we just try and hold about a thousand feet a minute, we'll keep it on the airspeed. Generally you can get about six, seven hundred feet a minute with these sort of planes. But we're trans... well, we're um, trading some airspeed for climb rates at the moment trying to get into a, a happy equilibrium of climbing without losing too much airspeed. So it's up through 4,000. Let's go and lean the engine out a bit more. Just coming up towards 5,000 feet. Um, so, being asked what turbulence settings do I use, I have it unrealistic. Um, I don't find it too bad at all. I think quite often people always, or people forget that in the real world you wouldn't fly in horrendous conditions anyway. So then they'll think it's ex an exaggerated effect in the sim, but it's in, usually in conditions they wouldn't even contemplate going flying in. So, yeah, it's an interesting one. Now we can go up towards 6,000 feet. So we, need to, we do need to get over the top of this ridge here then, so at least we can see what we're aiming for.
So we program the route in to, so is it T5U to Memelus 25U. Can we do a direct two on this thing? At least we can see it out in front of us. So I'm aiming for the gap. I don't know if we actually need to be this high, but we'll f we'll soon find out, won't we? So we're getting there. We're nearly at Mel Memelus now. Although there is a Beth there's a tiny little runway down there. Probably be quite fascinating to have a go at landing there. It's down there that you can see it in the bottom of the creek. Direct to. Oh, yes, yeah, so it does. So I'm looking out for a beacon. It's a long way down, isn't it? So oh, we're up to 8,000 feet now. So I'm going to stop climbing and start looking for this airfield. It's out over here somewhere on the plateau. So it's going to be fun landing here. We'll have to come in quite fast because we are in the thin air up here. I guess this means we'll complete the flight probably midweek next week with me being away over the next few days. So 
So is this the airfield here in the trees? I think it is. So let's have a look at the wind. So we've got a crosswind. Great. So if we do a pattern, do a left pattern in. I presumed that was the wrong way. Let's just have another look. Yeah, it is. Five hundred. I think what I'm going to do is put my aeroplane over here and pitch my tent. I think I've got the add-on installed. Should we have a look? Oh, no, I haven't got it installed. Oh, that's a shame. Nice landing. So I'm going to go just to taxi down to the buildings then. I haven't got the tent with me. I guess I want to get across the runway out of the way. Okay. Oh, I should have done the avionics first, really. the late afternoon sunshine as well through the trees.
cool. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for today. I'll continue on further up the river another day. So you can see there's quite a lot of the river still to go. You can carry on for miles and miles and miles up through the hills. I think it'd be a really, really nice route. So we'll do that another time. That was about the first <coughs> 70 or 80 miles worth of it. So I'm going to stop the stream there and I'll see you again soon. Take care.